Budget LS Factory 5 Roadster. Let's find and buy an LS engine. Coming right up. So here it is, Factory 5 Racing's YouTube channel, video titled Factory 5 Live Engine Options, dated April 22 of 2020. Let's take a listen to a little bit of it. Now, for those of you out there, this is a little, this is kind of a secret that we kept, but it's out there a little bit if you've looked. We do have an engine mount setup and a header setup if you want to run an LS in a coupe or in a Mark IV. Now, obviously, don't tell your Ford buddies about this. That's one of those things you don't want to do. But for those of us LS guys out there, we are supporting it for you guys because, again... Now, before all of you Ford purists start rage commenting below, just keep in mind that a Factory 5 Roadster is not a Ford product. In fact, Factory 5 discourages the use of the term Cobra. In addition, if you watch the full Factory 5 video, Dave Smith and Dan, Dan being the resident pro LS guy at Factory 5, fully acknowledges the value of the LS engine. LS engines offer the lowest cost per horsepower out there. I'm sure Factory 5 held out as long as they could, but business is business. And offering the Roadster with an LS option opens up that kit to a heck of a lot of GM guys. So as the title suggests, I'm doing a budget build. I'm not looking for outrageous horsepower. I am primarily looking for reliability and drivability. Once I get an LS engine, I'm not going to swap the heads and put a big old cam in it. In the beginning, I was looking for a complete engine and transmission package, most likely an LS1 or an LS6 with the factory T56 manual transmission with it. Why GM? Well, my history is all with the GM. I had my Pontiac Trans Am. I put two different small block Sheffies in there. They were both a Gen 1. Uh, first was carbureted, then a dual carburetor with a tunnel ram setup. And then my Chevelle, I pulled out the uh, old worn out 305 and put a 350 in there. And then I eventually I had a Holly on there, I had a uh, Edelbrock carbure carburetor on there, and then I converted it to fuel injection with an Edelbrock aftermarket. Um, when I built Dad's um, Factory 5 33 hot rod, I put a crate motor in there, and it was a GM Ramjet 350. Um, I was really impressed with that engine, and that engine is as good as it gets for a Gen 1. Once again, the original plan was to find a used LS1 or LS6 with its still attached T56 manual transmission. I was looking for an engine with all the sensors on the engine, complete wiring harness, ECU computer, complete front accessory with alternator water pump and power steering pump. I don't need the air conditioning compressor. A starter electronic gas pedal, and even if it had the uh, if the fuel filter slash regulator was available, I was going to take that too. Now, JR with Driveway Engineer, another great resource for all things LS, maintains that you can find an LS engine or at least a truck motor um, in your area wherever you live. Well, here in south of Seattle, there's not a big support for um, the hot rodding community. So the first place I went was Facebook Marketplace, and I mostly found engines with 200 plus thousand miles on them that were still in the cars, or I found a bunch of long blocks that had already been stripped. Uh, bracket pulleys gone, wiring harness gone, starter gone, so I would have to source all that stuff on my own. On Facebook Marketplace, I did find this ad. It's a uh, Corvette, it's got an LS6 and the T56 transmission. The problem is, is it looks like the the, uh, the car's been rolled. So I don't know if that engine's been hydrolocked, but you should still be able to turn that engine over. Uh, I emailed the guy, but he never emailed me back. During my search on Facebook Marketplace, uh, I found out from an email from Factory 5 Tech that the T56 that comes with the LS1 and LS6s um, that transmission would not work in the Roadster because it's too long, unless I use the IRS system, the independent rear suspension. The techs at Factory 5 are good techs, but they're also salespeople. So I didn't want to do that. It's going to cost too much. 
This meant that I would need to find a manual transmission separate from the engine. So with this option of sourcing my own transmission, I'm thinking that I could use an LS-based truck motor to further lower the cost, maybe a 4.8 or a 5.3. Once again, I'm not going for horsepower and performance. I want the reliability and drivability that a modern LS-based engine would provide. Another benefit of a truck engine is the bracket and pulley configuration. The LS1 and the LS6 from the Corvette has the alternator hanging way over and high from the engine. The same motor in the Camaro and Firebird, I think, has the alternator tucked underneath uh, the engine. The truck motor seem to have a nice and compact arrangement. All configurations seem to have a separate belt for the air conditioner pump, which I will not be using and plan to remove. So. I hopped in my car and went down to the local wrecking yard in Auburn. Um, I walked around there and saw a bunch of motors, uh, not a lot of Gen 3 stuff, but uh, um, they look pretty, pretty rough. An iron block that's been left out in the elements just once has got a nice uh, layer of rust uh, patina, I guess you might call it, and it doesn't look good. They had one, L, I think it was an LS1, may have been an LS6, came out of a Corvette and they wanted five grand for it. So I decided to look other places. It'd be nice to have an aluminum block, not for weight savings, but just because it looks better. So if not an LS1 or an LS6, then I started doing some research, maybe an LM4 or an L33. So that's when I started looking on eBay. First thing I started to look for was the LM4. And I found that it had, uh, most of the LM4s, if not all of them, has the uh, displacement on demand which it sounds like that's just problems waiting to happen. So I did some more research and I started looking for L33s. And I found a bunch of those. And uh, most of them were uh, just long blocks. They had already been stripped of the bracket pulleys, starters, all that stuff. Um, thinking they were for LS swaps and you're gonna uh, get all that nice aftermarket stuff and put it on there anyway, which I'm not looking to do yet. But I did come across uh, one listing and it had a video attached of the actual engine in the truck. Let's take a look at that. Hey, and welcome to Bog Brook Automotive. Uh, well, this winter has claimed yet another victim. The nose of this 06 Sierra is swayed over by about three inches. So she's at it. Uh, what we do get out of it is a great running, low to mid mileage uh, L33, all aluminum. It's the high performance 5.3. Uh, 799, 243 heads, flat top pistons, a little hotter cam, I believe. Um, this vehicle was taken care of, other than, well, hitting, actually it didn't hit, it went off the road. Um, I mean, 159K and the seat looks like that, the interior's clean. Uh, I'm pretty sure they did regular oil changes on it. Uh, there is a noise I can hear, what it is, is I don't know if you can see the fans moving, but there's a vibration, and what it is is the electric fans are no longer right where they belong because the nose suede was making the noise earlier. I'm like, God, that's not the engine. No, it isn't the engine. In fact, the fans are off. That's why it's quiet. But other than that, we have a great running 310, 315 horse, and we can make this stand alone for you. That's our thing. If it fits in your project, it'll run. Let's take a look at the oil pressure. That's my fave. Okay, we'll have to scan it. We have a check engine light. 99% of the time, it is a oxygen sensor. But, snappy. Hell yeah. Let's see, where did our oil pressure settle in? It settled in at about 38, 39 pounds. That's typical and normal. Uh, mileage is coming in, as I said, at 159,309 miles. We are fully up to temp, meaning I forgot I was supposed to do a video and left this running for 20 minutes. So, here we go. LS engine, we can convert it. Bogbrook Automotive, give us a call. We'll give you a deal. The number here is... So that's the engine that I bought. L33 from a 2006 GMC Sierra 1500. It's a Gen 3 L33 5.3 liter 325 cubic inch all aluminum and was 310 horses uh, from the factory. 
So I really want to thank Giovanni Dante Greco, Auto Guild, Driveway Engineer, and Street Rod Jim for all their great information and inspiration. Uh, they really inspired me to take the leap to uh, get an LS motor, which then inspired me to do the uh, Factory 5 Roadster. Links to those channels are in the description below. So in the next video, we're going to do a full inspection of the engine. We're going to take a real close look at what I got and if I got a good deal. Thanks for watching.